Hi, today we're going to do algebraic proof, lesson 2-5. Now proof is kind of a bad word in geometry, according to students. Students have a really hard time with proofs. Well, we'll get into the geometric proofs on the next lesson. And they're not as bad as you think they are, especially if you follow my five steps to, to success on writing proofs. Today, though, we're just going to cover algebraic proofs. Algebraic proofs aren't that bad at all. Today, we'll review properties of equality and use them to write algebraic proofs. And then we'll identify properties of equality and congruence. So first of all, what is a proof? That's our vocab word for today. Our, so a proof is an argument that uses logic, definitions, properties, and previously proven statements to prove that a conclusion is true. And usually we'll do what's called two column proofs. We're going to do an example of that in today's lesson. So our algebraic properties are down here, and they're uh, ones that you have been introduced to before in years past. So this should look pretty simple to you. First of all, if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C, which means you're allowed to add a number or some or a letter or a variable onto both sides of the equation and it still is a true statement. The subtraction property of equality is the same except we're going to subtract instead. So if a equals b then a minus c equals b minus c. So you're allowed to subtract something from both sides of the equation and it still makes it true. Multiplication property of equality, same thing, but this time we're going to multiply. If A equals B, then A times C equals B times C. Division, same thing, but dividing. If A equals B, then A divided by C equals B divided by C. And on this one, by the way, C cannot equal zero because you're not allowed to divide by zero. The reflexive property of equality says that something is equal to itself. A equals A. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but we do use reflexive properties in proofs, in geometric proofs especially. The symmetric property of equality says that if A equals B, then B equals A. So you're allowed to flip-flop it around and it still is a true statement. Transitive property of equality is if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. The word train comes to mind when I think of the transitive property, kind of like a choo-choo train. So here we have the front of the choo-choo train, here we have the middle part of the choo-choo train, and here we have the caboose. So that means that the front is attached to the caboose through the car in the middle. And that sometimes helps people to remember the word transitive. It's just a little suggestion for you. And substitution says if A equals B, then B can be substituted oops, for A in any expression. Okay, so those are our um, properties of equality. So let's do an example of 
and we're going to use these properties of equality and we're going to write our first proof. So here's an example. Now a proof has this T chart here. On the left of the T chart is, are the statements. On the right of the T chart are the reasons for the statements. And that's what a proof is. You have to give a reason for everything that you say. So here's what we are given here. Okay, and so um, we are given that AB is congruent to BC. So AB is congruent to BC. That is given to us. Okay, we then can know that AB, the segment, or the uh, AB length is equal to BC length. And I'm just going to tell you what that is. That's the definition of congruent segments. So you're allowed to use definition of congruent segments to go back and forth between congruence and equals. Now we're going to substitute. So instead of AB, I'm going to write 5y plus 6. So 5y plus 6 equals 2y plus 21. And that is substitution property of equality. We're allowed to substitute that in. Now we need to solve for it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides, and I'm going to get 3y plus 6 equals 21. So I subtracted 2y. So my reason is subtraction property of equality. I'm going to cover up this 37, which is the page. I'll probably go a little lower than that. Um, number five, now I want to move my six over. So how do I move my six? Well, I need to subtract again. So that's going to be 3y equals 15. And once again, that is subtraction property of equality. Almost done. Need to solve for y still. So number six is y equals five. What did I do in order to do that? I divided the three. So that is division property of equality. Congratulations, you just wrote your very first proof. Now notice the proof once again. It's a T-chart. We put statements on the left, and we have to give a reason or a justification for each of the statements that we make. Okay? Reflexive property of congruence. So the reflexive property of congruence means that a figure A is equal to a figure, I'm sorry, congruent to figure A. For example, I could say that EF segment is congruent to segment EF. Okay, the symmetric property of equality says if figure A is congruent to figure B, then figure B is congruent to figure a. So if we were thinking about this maybe in angles, we would say if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then angle 2 is congruent to angle 1. And lastly, the transitive property of congruence. So this is if some figure A is congruent to some figure B, and some figure B is congruent to figure C, then figure A is congruent to figure C. So if we were to think about this maybe going back to um, seg segments again, we could say that um, AB 
is congruent to BC and BC is congruent to, uh, I don't know, PQ. So this, I should have said if. Then the first one, AB, is congruent to the last one, PQ. Okay? So those are, as you can see, you'll notice that reflexive, symmetric, and transitive we talked about over here when it has to do with equality. And it's also true for congruence in geometry figures as well. Go ahead and cross this off. We don't need to do that today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.